Welcome to the Open to Hope Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, we've got a really special guest on today, Joy Berger, and I want to tell people she's been on a number of our shows. Heidi, you want to introduce Joy? I would love to, Mom. As you said, Joy is one of our very favorite people. She lives up to her name because she is definitely Joy, seriously. Uh, we are going to talk with her, Dr. Joy Berger, about what is new in grief, loss, and recovery. And one of the things that is new, Mom, as you know, is that Joy is the new executive director of the Association for Death Education and Counseling, which is called ADAC. She is the author of Music of the Soul, Composing Life Out of Loss. And she was awarded the National Heart of Hospice Psychosocial Spiritual Care Award. So welcome to our show, Joy. Thank you. I'm so glad to be with you as always. Well, we've got an important conference coming up and we're going to be seeing you there. And we are excited about it. Columbus, Ohio. And it is the ADAC conference. If you're around in the Columbus area, there are going to be some exciting speakers on that are going to be talking about what is new in the world of grief and loss and recovery. ADEC, A-D-E-C dot org is our website. So go there at any time and, and learn more about ADEC. Again, the Association for Death education and counseling. And when people hear that first word, they are often taken aback. Oh, death? No, death and death and dying and bereavement. That is what we are about. And when you're wanting to find out what is new in the world, we are the place to go. Why? Mm -hmm. Because ADEC is made up of the researchers, the leading uh, authors, clinicians, researchers around the world. And we're also a vibrant place for students, for laypersons to come and find out more information. One of the things that's new is actually ADEC's own publication, the Handbook of Thanatology. This is the third edition. This is based on ADEC's newer revised, what's called the Body of Knowledge. So this takes everything that's out there and it simplifies it and it goes into depth and breadth. My background before ADEC was hospice and or has been hospice for 30 years before this role. One of the things that drew me to ADEC as a member teaching at a conference back in about 2007 was that when I arrived, it was a, it was a community of my people of mm -hmm people who have that same kind of passion, that something that calls us to learn, to give, to contribute uh, to the world of persons experiencing death, dying, grief, loss, and hope for coming through it. Going to any of our sessions, whether it's at the conference or through the year with our webinars, our half-day virtual workshops, whatever that may be, you are sure to experience other persons who are committed like you and who are luminaries, who are leading the way. If you're just an individual person who's yes. suffered a loss, you're going to hear about the research that they've been doing that will help you understand more about your grief journey. But also you can become a student and become a thanatologist through ADAC, which is kind of amazing. Yeah. If, you're, if you're listening to this and you're saying, yeah, I really got a lot out of hospice. I'd like to go on and do what you folks are doing. You can do that through ADAC, which is kind of amazing. The last week of April, Tuesday and Wednesday are pre-conference sessions. You can still sign up for that. Um, that is only in person. That is not um, virtual. But then uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we have sessions all day. That is virtual. You can you can uh, sign in from your computer. Those are oh, nice. Live and recorded. So even if you can't attend then, you can still uh, have experience them later. Joy, I love this because my mother is actually presenting at ADAC yes, on Saturday she morning. Yes, is. Saturday and I think 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. And mom, what are you presenting on? Frank, my partner and I are presenting on Open to Love, The Secrets of Senior Dating After a Loss. Because we've seen so many lonely people and my husband passed away a few years ago. And I found out that there's a whole wonderful senior dating world out there where you can get rid of that loneliness and find somebody. And my partner and I want to talk about it. Frank's a psychologist and he's my partner, as am I. And we are going to present together on our new book on Open to Love. So anyway, we're excited about being there. You know, Joy, one of the speakers I'm really interested in 
Dr. Lisa Shulman, who is speaking on healing the brain after loss, a neurologist perspective. Yes, and this is one of those fields that is really opening up. So uh, she has done extensive research on how the brain responds to grief loss. We've also had two recent webinars with neurological response, and we have a couple of other presenters at our conference on that as well. To me, this is one of the most exciting areas of grief, loss, and recovery. And the reason it is, is because it's showing a normality. It's showing a pattern of how your brain is taking care of itself, of how your brain is going to take you through the grieving process. You don't need drugs. You don't need medications. You don't need those things. Let's understand what is happening so we can give peer support and we can give what people need to go through the process normally, a normal process of the grieving process. Our bodies know how to do it. Yes. We've given up trust. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, Gloria. And in this day and age also where we talk about whole body, the about mindfulness, about the heart, about heart coherence with the mind, so many different pieces. It is about um, what I call finding peace in the pieces and wholeness mm -hmm. in the holes of, of our loss and grief and being a, being a full person and getting rid of those God awful cliches and platitudes that, yeah. that often come across. Um, oh, you should just and be over it. You should just get through it. It norm yes, it normalizes it and help helps us understand our own journey and each other's journey so much better. I see um, people talking about death and dying in a in a more comfortable, loving, understanding setting where when you say, wow, yeah, I mean, remember early on when my son was killed in an automobile accident, I was involved with ADAC. By the way, then it was called the Forum for Death Education. Yes. And I was wow. at the University of Rochester way back in the day. And I just remember it was kind of like a landing place for me to be able to go and be in this environment where we were talking about the grieving process in so many aspects. Um, Mom, you're bringing up a good point because a lot of people that I see at ADAC have gotten into this profession because of their own losses. That's exactly where I was headed, Heidi, mm -hmm. and, and with my experience with the two of you and, and that so many of us in ADEC, one of the things I love is the breadth and the depth of the diversity of, of not only professionals, but of personal stories and that there are so many people who, because of a loss in their personal lives, then added in in whatever profession they were in, this thanatology, the study of death, dying, and grief into whatever they do, and then they bring it. I got to know you through through dinner where we were sharing each other's with about 30, 40 other people where, where in the thick of that, it was just an easy, natural thing to talk about our own personal losses that brought us to this world. And then we find support. Many of us, we, we might not see each other for several years, but there's always this easy, instant connection with each other. Absolutely. And the other thing that makes ADAC very unusual is that, you know, NASW is specifically for social workers, APA, mm -hmm. psychologists. ADAC is an interdisciplinary organization for everybody. You've Absolutely. got photographers there. You know, Todd Hoshberg, you have nurses, doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists, social, everybody, social workers, it, the whole gambit. Which and, I love. and you have doulas and death coaches and all sorts yes. of things coming on the scene now. Absolutely. Exactly. Death well. doulas is another big one. What many don't realize as well is that ADEC is truly an international organization. Mm -hmm. We have members in that are cover six continents, wow. over 35 countries, and we are really proud of that. And in this digital age, we're finding new ways to connect mm -hmm. um, each other. Well, well, the president of your board, Andy Ho, is international. Yes. Yes, Dr. Andy Ho, and so we have meetings that we try to be time sensitive, so we have him 12 hours ahead of me in Louisville, Kentucky, and somebody else out in California. You wrote a wonderful book on um, music of the soul, composing your life out of loss, and I just wonder if you have some tips uh, for people on how to compose your life after a loss. Oh, what do you do that's creative? 
info. It's not about necessarily what well, though my book is about music because that's my background. Um, it really it, it's built on the, those creative pieces in your loss in, in your life. <laughs> yes, in your loss and in, and in your life. Mm-hmm. I use um, music metaphors for rhythms of body and soul, themes and counter themes of life's story, harmonies and dissonances of healing, styles of doing and being. Now, those are chapters in my book. So that's kind of how my brain thinks. And it's not about some kind of perfect journey at all. It is about finding the artistry. It is about creating and composing one's own artistry in life. Uh, Gloria and Heidi, you have done this beautifully out of the the death, the tragic loss of your son and brother with the whole Open to Hope Foundation. That is something that you have composed and created. Um, And as Gloria, you with your new relationship with your partner after the loss of your husband, so it is it is about um, openness it is about uh, never ever denying or covering up the deep pains and feelings yes my name is joy but also with that is the opposite of 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 pain and sorrow and how Mm -hmm. it's really the paradox the bringing those together that we can find the wholeness and the healing and the moving forward and giving hope to others. I like this, Joyce. So I'm just wondering, (laughs) given that you've wrapped your arms around the field for so long, hospice, your book, and now ADAC, where do you see the field going? Where do you think, I mean, do you think things are changing in how people find hope? Do you think that, you know, what what do you see as the future? Culture. Mm. And, And we are at some really important crossroads. Are we going to embrace persons of diverse cultures or are we going to alienate um and and uh adec is is actively supporting um uh therapists who are serving uh, refugees from ukraine we had a uh, one of our members who who contacted us about uh, oh would we give them discounts on about 30 of our books uh he was teaching a class of refugee therapists uh, from from the Ukraine to then wow. serve serve others discounts goodness no we sent them to them we, mm-hmm. we I love gave, this gave them our books so I so where are we headed uh, hopefully more international globalization and mm-hmm. and closer in personalization with others death and dying becoming much more of an an ease conversation. However many years ago when I began with hospice, the word was hardly used or it was still one of those things. Now, you know, Jimmy Carter, everybody knows uh, what what hospice is and what it what it means. Uh, Hopefully the word thanatology will become much, much uh, better used. And also collaboration among our different specialized groups. Heidi, you mentioned the NASW, APA, all of these different groups that now often have a specialty in death, dying, grief, Mm -hmm. and loss. When we can truly collaborate with each other, build each other up, um, that that is really moving us forward and helping humanity. Mm-hmm. Our vision at ADEC vision statement has to do with um, uh, making death, dying, and grief loss more of a um, a human experience, uh, more common. Normalizing it more, talking about it more, and yeah, I I, I love all this. I, and and also, like you said, you can reach people internationally, as we know by with Open to Hope faster and easier and better because we've got all these virtual spaces. I want to give a shout out again to this conference. It's going to be amazing. And I hope anybody's around will join it and actually come if you're in Columbus, Ohio, the last weekend in April. This is the year 2023. And so our uh, pre-conference in Columbus, Ohio is Tuesday and Wednesday, April the 25th and 26th. Our full conference is uh, both in person in Columbus and 
with a streamlined virtual webcast component during those same days on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, April 27 through 29, 2023. And uh, next year is in Houston. So, you know, keep checking this out. So, <laughs> and we'll be on on Saturday at 11 o'clock in Columbus. So, if you want to meet my partner, Frank, and me and talk about That's right. uh, Open to Love and the Secrets of Senior Dating After Loss, we will be there. And, Joy, thank you so much for being on the thank show you. today and for everything you do for the world. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. You're a phenomenal person to be the executive director and I look forward to see you seeing you in Columbus thank you and thanks everybody for joining us on the show today and Heidi and I and I'm sure Joy want to say that if you've lost hope please lean on ours until you find your own and God bless I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley you have been listening to Open to Hope the podcast you can follow Open to Hope on Facebook Instagram and Twitter to learn more visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.